Shadow Factories and We Evolve presents Tales from the Aletheian Society, Book 2, Chapter 4, Memento Mori. I'll now be beginning with the death forties in the parlour. Mind and crowd in, these things are not cheap. I suppose we'd better go up and take a turn, eh, Godalming? Although I find it terribly hard not to mug when I see a camera. I think every photo Sophie and I have together, I've got a big stupid grin on my face. Probably not appropriate for the occasion. I think most people would say you've had a lot to be happy about, sir. Yes, I suppose so. But sometimes, I don't know. I just feel as if everyone else is having a conversation I'm not involved in. Next. Aye, uh, get right in there. Aye, uh, put your arm around them. He will only bite. Damn, sure I had my eyes closed. Not to worry, sir. I'm sure they'll get you again later. If there even is a later, eh? We always think so. But look what happened to him. Lo, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. Oh, I can guess which way you think my bread is buttered. Where in the deuce are we, anyway? Not in the coffin, at least. Thank God. We were buried alive, but without one of the, the patented bell thingamies to let everyone know. A Shrine Mortimer held us at gunpoint. Pistols are funny things. You never know when one's going to misfire, eh, auntie? I told you your weaponry needed checked more often, Hieronymus. It's a poor workman who blames his tools. I'm not blaming the bloody tools. I'm blaming you. I assume this is part of some scheme and not just incipient dementia. What were you planning to do if they just killed us out of hand? They don't always monologue, you know. <laughs> Good morning, honoured guests. It is my very great pleasure to present to you Her Grace Euphemia Madeline Sinclair, heir to the House of Stuart, High Steward and Anointed Regent of Scotland. Welcome one and all members of the Aletheian Society. We feel we must apologise for the conditions of your cell and for the treatment that you've suffered at the hands of our retainers. Unfortunately, you find us preparing for war, and in such times, things oft require a rougher hand than one would wish. Rest assured that once matters have been resolved, you'll be safely repatriated to England. What madness is this of which you are speaking? War? Madame, you are in violation of at least four articles of the documents of alliance between our two organizations. And, Jessie, what are you doing with these people? What am I doing? Maybe I just got tired of having English and foreigners treating me like shite in my own country. Not to mention that sour old biddy setting the polis on me and treating me as if I was the kind of wagtail that would let all jollocks there have his way with me. It grieves us sorely to go against a document bearing our own mother's signature, but it is the divine right of a ruler to exercise their judgment as their conscience demands. Once Scotland has been returned to its proper condition of rulership, we shall seek to make amends with your society. After all, Apart from the matter of national politics, we are most evident natural allies. Your Grace, speaking as a Scottish woman and a member of the Aletheian Society, I think it would be easier for us to accept all this if you were to let us know 
What is going on? Indeed, it is but a small matter. Our illustrious bloodline has always had sway over the supernatural forces abroad in these lands. Up until now, we've utilised that power to keep them quiescent, but now we have decided to utilise it in a more direct manner to force the British government to accept our claim to throne and rulership of Scotland. Good God, woman! What are you planning to unleash? You watch your tongue in the presence of royalty, you impudent wee manny! Dinny fash yourself. I know what Boface here needs to keep him quiet. <coughs> Enough, Miss Gordon. We applaud your fervour, but we must show hospitality to these poor souls, no matter how offensive we may find their manners to be. We shall not see our prisoners mistreated unduly. Oh, so sorry, Your Grace, but this mamsy old windbags had it coming for a long time. He doesn't like the Scots very much. Nonsense. He can't very well dislike... No, don't say it. Lord Arthur Roxbury, Your Grace. I've got at least three or four second cousins who own about half of Merryshire, so hopefully I can count as Scottish. I was wondering if it isn't too much trouble, if you could tell us what exactly is it that's going to happen. The close of Mary King. You've let the thing loose because you intend to use it as a weapon. Hardly loose, Lady Roxburgh. It is held securely by Stuart blood and the implacable will of the rightful ruler of these lands. It merely serves as the instrument of our design for the moment. Once its task is complete, it will be returned to the darkness from whence it came. You sacrificed Margaret and the others to it, then? What of it? They were sworn to serve us, body and soul. We needed both in order to fulfil our destiny. By the blood and images of the Seventeen was it bound. By the blood and images of the Seventeen was it released. Your Grace, time is ticking on. We'll have to make haste if we want to get the first batch loaded and away. Forgive me, friends. It seems as if we must awa. The sweet pipes of destiny are playing across hill and glen, and we must heed them. Certainly sounds like a pipe dream to me. Fare ye well, one and all. Oh, and I wouldn't waste your breath shouting, my wee bairns. You're too far underground for that to do any good. These bars were built to hold the Duke of Queensbury's flesh-eating giant of a son, so you're not going to be breaking them. Best to just bide your time here. Bye the bye now. <laughs> I can't believe Jessie would turn on us like that. Seems like only yesterday we were comrades in arms. It was only yesterday. Oh, I feel responsible. It was my thoughtless words that drove her to join these lunatics. As usual, Aunt Cressida is to blame. Blame? Come now, Hieronymus. I know she must have passed you something. There's hardly any other reason she would have touched you voluntarily. Ugh, yes, she planted a set of lockpicks on me. Didn't spare the boot leather while she was at it, though. Your plan worked, but I still say you got damned lucky. <laughs> Don't always monologue, indeed. What's going on? My head is pounding like a drum. Wait, so Jessie's still on our side then? It's all a ruse. What a wheeze. It's a shame I can't tell everyone at Pratt's about it. Oh, I detest those stuffy gentlemen's clubs. Why can't they not let in women as well? Well, it's pretty crowded as it is, and there's a long waiting list. I don't know that you could actually fit anybody else in. Maybe if you took out that big armchair... I used to be a beefsteak man myself. Never gave a fig about the politics, but they did a damnably good nosebag. So, we're in an underground prison cell, discussing gentlemen's dining clubs? I fear I've missed a critical step somewhere while I was unconscious. Young Robert is quite correct. Compose yourselves and get on with society business. 
We have an insane Queen of Scotland about to try and dissolve the Union using the dark arts. We must strike now while we have the element of surprise. Yes, definitely missed something important. Well, now I really want a steak. But setting that aside for the greater good, let us take stock. We are in an unknown underground labyrinth with no weapons and no idea where our opponents went. But at least we have surprise, eh, Auntie? Cease your incessant whining, Hieronymus. I know these tunnels like the back of my hand. In my day, initiation into the society wasn't just bearing your buttocks to fifteen old men with paddles in a darkened room. We had to work for it. She's so formidable. The way she outwits him and forces him to obey her, a lion tamer could do no better. Yes, dear. Oh, very well, knowing the tunnels, we still don't know which way they went. It will be one of those two tunnels here. I suggest Hieronymus and myself go down this one on the left, Lord and Lady Roxburgh, and young Robert, the one on the right. Should we split our forces so? We are without weapons. Nonsense! These ancient timbers can provide a source of perfectly serviceable improvised weaponry. Combined with the element of surprise, it should be enough to carry the day. Just be sure to space out your attentions. We wouldn't want 20 tons of sandstone landing on top of us before the job is done. Or at all, really. Uh, I think I'll forgo the weaponry. I wouldn't have the first idea what to do with it. If you find your way to an exit, I suggest you take it, Robert, dear. Your mother would want to see you safe, and it seems the least I can do for her. Thank you, Miss Kidwallader. I'm sorry not to have been much use. Nonsense, my boy. Not all of us are meant for this life. <sighs> not all of us get a choice. Come on, then. Let us depart. You, you seem a fearless lot, Lord and Lady Roxburgh. My imagination has always been my greatest enemy, filling my nights with dreams of things dark and dismal until I can't barely stand to close my eyes sometimes. Well, I try not to think about much. I find that helps. Knowledge, Robert. That is the greatest panacea for fear. Once you know the nature of what you face and how to defeat it, you find that light of truth drives out the shadows of ignorance in which fear hides. The key to success, as in any endeavour, is the maintaining of the paramount supremacy of the rational mind and complete emotional control. Sophie, there you are. I've been wondering where you got to. Oh, Arthur. I'm here, my darling. Everything's going to be all right. Arthur, I just wanted you to know, in the midst of all this tragedy and darkness, I wanted you to know. What is it, my angel? You can tell me anything. Arthur, I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Are you sure? But this is wonderful news. I'm so sorry. I know the timing just couldn't be worse. My dear, the timing is perfect. Something to lift our spirits on such a sad day as this. Oh, darling, I've never been happier. Forgive me, dear heart. Forgive me for never giving you the children you wanted before now. There's simply nothing to forgive, my love. God gives us the miracle when he chooses, and not a moment before. And I've decided. After the funeral, I'm going back to Switzerland for good. Switzerland? But why? I, I thought you were happy here. I mean, I love the Alps, but... For good? Seems just a little final. You're done with Britain, with the society. I want to raise our child far from such madness. The Silius can go to hell for all I care. I'm done being his cuckoo in the nest. Who's Silius? I don't understand what you're talking about. Look, all I know is this. I love you, and I want to be with you. If that means cuckoo clocks and alpine hikes for the rest of my life, then fair enough. As long as we are all together. I love. <laughs> so, want to tell me what all that dreadful mummery was about? Don't believe I've ever known you to be sentimental. Why'd you send the boy away? 
and spare me the tedious denials. Ah, <sighs> Margaret and I, we were very close when we were younger. How close are we talking here? Auntie, are you, are you a sapphist? Don't be ridiculous, Hieronymus. Oh, sorry, just seemed like a penny dropped there for a moment and... Uh... Women don't do such things. Uh, no, Auntie, I'm sure you're right. Not for free, anyway. <gasps> Cressida. What in the blazes was that? Cressida, you've come back. You said you would. I waited and waited until the candle burned down. I was so hungry, Cressida, so cold. But you never came back, Cressida. Lillian, is that you? Well, that's Lillian. We're on the right track. A phantasmal apparition of somebody you used to know, and it seems you manipulated them and left them to die in a godforsaken hole. I'm not even remotely surprised. Cressida. Come back, Cressida. I don't care about joining the society anymore. I just want to be out of here. I'm sorry, Lillian. We're all on our own in this life. I discovered that for myself all those years ago. And if you didn't, then you were never society material in any case. Lord, you're a cold fish, auntie. And you are an overly emotional weakling. But we all have our crosses to bear. Sadly, you're mine. Come back! Some kind of shipping crate here. What in the deuce is that noise? Somebody got a set of castanets inside? There's a label. Hard to read in this light. I believe it's a... Post office shipping mark. This crate is bound for Waterloo Station. Stinks, whatever it is. I don't suppose there's any chance we can just chalk this up to blissful ignorance and continue our pursuit. We need to know what's going on here, Hieronymus. Help me with this. <laughs> Gah, the stench. Somebody's intent on posting a rotting body to Waterloo. Not just a body, my boy. It's moving. Get the lid back on! Hold it still. I shall just trim off the pieces sticking out. Hang on a moment while I pile some loose boulders on top. So, that's their little game. Posting corpses to London. Actually, I mean, that's pretty pathetic, isn't it? A few sturdy dockers could have taken care of those scrawny brutes. Unobservant as ever, Hieronymus. Did you not notice the bluish skin? The piscine aroma? The clear fluid it was splattered with? No, Auntie. Bizarrely, my attention was focused on the fact the ruddy thing was trying to kill us. I am not a doctor, but I've seen enough cases in my time to recognise death by cholera. Cholera? Well, as if there isn't enough of it about at the best of times. Seems like hardly a day goes by without an outbreak somewhere. Yes, but I think their plan is to have it break out everywhere. Look in this next chamber. There's, there's hundreds of these boxes addressed for London, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, every major city in England. This is the most monstrous scheme ever devised. These blasted jocks won't be happy until I can never go home. Now, Hieronymus, you know that you... No, I'm not. I'm an Englishman, and I will be until the day I die. An accident of birth... And blood? An accident of birth does not determine my nationality. Oh, hold your wished, boy. I hear something up ahead. I believe we've caught up with our prey. Oh, yes, because we are definitely the hunters in this scenario. Right, to you, Morty. Left with your legs. My name is Mortimer, not Morty. Oh, Morty boy, or heed the boy, you soap-dodging gutter trash. Well, I'd rather be gutter trash than a than a peely wally wee corpse footer like you. How dare you? My family have served the members of the Unicorn Club for over a century. Oh, you make it sound like they're breeding you like prized dugs. Come to think of it, you do put me in mind of one of they wee yappy bastards with the eyeballs that stick out. A lap, Doug. That's what you are. I don't have to take this kind of abuse from you. I'm a master of the funerary arts and grand high mortician to the regent. Oh, aye. That's why she's got you helping to shift boxes full of leaky, stinking corpses, because she thinks that much of you. Can you two just not stop blethering and get on with it? 
There's a lot more crates to come and we've got a tight schedule to keep to. Aye, it'd go a sight faster if you get your horns dirty, big man. Don't be ridiculous. Do I look like some kind of horny-handed labourer? I wouldn't know what you look like, pal. Something off of the cover of a tin of shortbread, maybe? Either that or an explosion in a tartan weaver's shop. The likes of you wouldn't understand sartorial elegance. This outfit cost more money than you'll see in a lifetime. The silk for this shirt came from Valencia. The leather for my turn shoes is made from narwhal's hide. This tartan drove three weavers to madness before I was happy with it. I'm the most debonair and refined wee laddie you're ever going to meet in this life or the next. Now you mind your P's and Q's and get on with your appointed task. <sighs> you see, now that is how you use the element of surprise. Hmm. I'll just take this pistol, shall I? Your grace! Your grace! The society have escaped and they're ruining everything! <sighs> Took you long enough. If I'd been working on a slower, I'd have got a job for the council. They were getting ready to send the first load up to Waverley Station. I don't know what the whole plan is, but that regent woman is a her head and the laird is a total roaster. Well, thank you, by the way, for that terribly convincing beating you gave me earlier. A less charitable soul might almost have thought you were enjoying yourself. Ach, we bile your heed. I was the one taking all the risks. I'm surprised you could even feel it through all that lard. How dare you, madam? A good amount of weight is simply an indication of a, a surplus of healthful vitality. While her heart lifts at the sight of such bonny warriors arrayed for battle, we're afraid we must now exercise our most royal prerogative and remove ye. By this ancient sceptre, by my royal blood and right of birth, I command thee, spirit, dispatch mine enemies. Is, is it not supposed to glow? I thought the Basilicon said the sceptre was supposed to glow. I hear your call, Regent. Aye, now be about your business, spirit. Bound I was by Stuart blood. Released I was by Stuart blood. And commanded now ye are by Stuart blood. <laughs> No, Euphemia. Your bonny prince spread his seed far and wide, but there's not a drop of his blood in your veins. But I should thank you properly for offering up the others to me. Come, join me in an embrace. No! Back! Stay back! The scepter compels- Compels nothing without the rightful heir. <laughs> But there is still one left. They'll have to be found and dealt with before the great work begins. My ascendancy must not be thwarted again. <laughs> it's gone. What in the hells was that? It, it looked just like a street urchin, but whatever it did to the regent, sh she's just dust now. Gotcha. This scepter thing. They thought they could control it with that. But who? Who is it looking for? Roll up, roll up. Get yourselves a swatch of the greatest show ever to be seen. Adults and children of all ages, this is pure culture. So get wired in like a tramp eating soup. Here, mister. What's your show about? Puppet son. It's a Punch and Judy show. Pfft, they're all women, but... Which one's supposed to be Punch? Ah, you're a wee smart ass, aren't you? Well, if you look very closely, you might see Punch after all. Ah! <laughs> Mom! Oh, no again. Everybody's a critic. Fresh air! Daylight! We've escaped! It looks like we've come out somewhere on Arthur's seat. This whole city must be riddled with tunnels. Aye, the old town is a fearful mess of slums with heaven knows how many layers of collapsed basements and sealed up tunnels. Nobody knows even the half of what's down there. For whatever reason, I believe the Cadwalladers want to deal with the region by themselves. So in the meantime, I suggest we make ourselves useful by following up on the autopsy we requested. I thought Cressida told you to drop that. Well, 
She's Dr. Cadvalida's superior, not mine. And since he is chapter master, and in any case, rarely seems to care what I do as long as it doesn't distract him from wallowing in alternating baths of vice and self-pity, I'm choosing to ignore her and do what I see fit. So it seemed as if Lady Roxborough was becoming disenchanted with Miss Cadwallader's methods? I must admit, I was quite glad the scales seemed to have dropped from her eyes. It wasn't like my Sophie at all to be so deferential. You know, while I'm sure Miss Cadwallader is a woman of many fine qualities, I struggle to put my finger on what any of them might actually be. And did the autopsy reveal anything useful? Isabel? Forgive me for interrupting. We were wondering what you had discovered. Ah, Lady Roxburgh. Uh, I suppose I should start by putting your mind at rest. There is no evidence of wrongdoing in this case. What? She was shot in the chest and bludgeoned with a poker. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. Quite all right, Lady Roxburgh. I'm firmly convinced her spirit had departed already. What was left behind was just flesh. What was left behind was so desiccated that it began to disintegrate even as we began our explorations. We managed to save most of the remains in that jar, but I doubt anyone could be convicted on the basis of powder alone. Is this normally possible? I can't account for it. The cadaver was still showing some flexibility and blood pooling when you brought it in. It's almost as if something was sucking it dry of every drop of moisture. I have no medical or, or indeed rational explanation. <coughs> oh God, I'm so sorry. I've got your mother everywhere. Arthur, how many times do I have to tell you about opening jars and sticking your nose in? Did the incident with Dr. Cadvalida's cocaine teach you nothing? A again, quite all right, Lord Roxburgh. Her soul is in a better place. That is very kind of you to say, Robert. But despite your protestations, I insist on paying for a funeral for, for these trousers and anything else we can sweep up. Mrs Thorne, is it possible you might have a broom about the place? And perhaps a spare pair of trousers? Oh, my gosh, a little bit. Sorry, step. From dust we come to dust we shall return, eh? Peace for my lunch, and a bag of bricks to chuck through the pub windies, and the drizzle is just coming on nicely. All the bam pots still off in Edinburgh, and the messing up Hunter House. This is going to be a rare day of pleasure for me. Oh! oh. If you'd taken more care as you walked down the street, you wouldn't have stood upon both of my feet. You have not my peace down the drain. And you've spilled my good bricks, you gleek at arse. Through your unruly actions, you've caused this fall by being so lanky and skinny and tall. But now you face the wrath of McGonagall. Aye, well, now you'll face the wrath of Gillespie. You'll rue the day, you... you why are you talking in rhymes, you daft bam? I'm a man of genius bright, and my words the public does delight. Another mentalist. I may as well as stay in Glasgow. Farewell, Dundee. You can save your own souls. I'm no chucking bricks through your pub windies anymore. Oh, beautiful city by the Clyde. How unhappy must be the folk where this man resides. Not half as miserable as the folk of Dundee must be, listening to this pish. <laughs> <laughs> 